US markets struggled to rebound from sharp losses triggered by rising rates. What's behind that and what's Wall Street thinking? This is the IG Trading Talk and I'm Manuel Koch. And joining me now are Salah Idine Boumidi, he's the head of markets at IG, and Peter Tuckman, the legendary Einstein of Wall Street, over 35 years on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. So good to see you guys. Thank you. Hi, guys. What's up? Peter. We are a dynamic trio, the three of us. It's wonderful. <laughs> Very nice. Peter, we uh, read in the news and see uh, the headlines about the rising rates. Is it really affecting the markets? Are the markets afraid of that? Because I think the Fed will do whatever it takes to help the markets. So you know what? I mean, I, I am not an economist and the whole yield story and the, uh, the uh, rates uh, question is a little over my head. But what I noticed is, and I, the, from the reading that I've done, is that it's sort of a, a you know, We've seen this before when we had that death cross, when we had the inverted yield curve, and now we're seeing these the, 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 the yield go where it's going in fast and furious movements. Um, it's the story of the day, and I think they're sort of pumping it. If you listen to it, Bob Pisani of CNBC the other day said, oh, no, it was actually Josh Brown, one of the guys who runs a, a Red Holtz Health Management, said, watch it, guys. They're going to start hitting us with the yield story now. And it's almost like they're trying to fulfill a prophecy that the market should be sort of selling off. I think, as we just discussed with Salah, we're in wild, stormy waters here, right? So Salah discussed in our previous conversation how historically February is a month of consolidation, a bit of a sell-off year. And we saw last year on February 12th, markets hit record, record highs as we careened into the March 23rd lows once the pandemic became kind of real. We are also butting our head up against, let's look at where we are. We really have to acknowledge that, right? I'm not even going to waste a moment talking about the economy versus the market because that bifurcation is more pronounced now than ever. Uh, what, what I'm saying is that you talked, you mentioned the Federal Reserve. I, yesterday, I mean, as Mr. Powell said, they're, they're, they're buying $120 billion worth of everything on a monthly basis. That's a huge number. We're talking about a stimulus package from the president. I think the terminology stimulus is incorrect. Something else that I learned last night, this is disaster relief. Let's be clear. This is not people who are up here being given a little money for stimulation of the economy. We've got a pandemic that's on fire. We've got new variants. New York City, apparently, as of yesterday, is under attack globally. Europe is completely enclosed and shut down. So while that's not really affecting the market per se, we need to understand where the gasoline and the fuel is that took the market to where it is, and perhaps maybe a little bit of the, the foot being taken off the gas in a little bit. We did hit 32,000 in the Dow. You know, we know it. The market's trading in support and resistance. It's clear that every sell-off we've seen over the last few days, and I think we've got three or four consecutive down days, has been rebuffed when we've hit technical levels, as Salah would know. Yesterday, we saw, was it yesterday? Yes, the market was, was, was badly damaged yesterday. And I was really looking, I actually reached out to my partner and Salah's David Green to say, David, at, 380, at 382 in the S&P, where is their support? And he said, Pete, it does, there's no support until 3, uh, 380, uh, uh, 380 oh, 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 08 or something. I don't remember what the exact. 380.80, 380. I think, was the support level. And sure enough, we got down there. So there is a bit in the market. The Fed is definitely involved in this support. How the yield plays out, I, I'm not really clear whether in the world we're in right now it's really a factor. I would, I would, I'd, I'd pass the ball to uh, Salah on that question. Yeah, I'm not overly concerned about the steppening yield curve at the moment, right now. It's too early to say, but uh, it helped actually for my warning. Unfortunately, the February weakness that I warned about at the beginning of the month began to materialize in mid month, yeah, in mid February, and accelerated into the end of the month right now. And uh, of course, the yields. The yield topic is helping 
to to achieve that. And I think March is a month, in, especially in post-election years, and especially technically speaking, if we are in a consolidating area like we see on the market. So what I think, I mean, if we look on DGA, S&P 500, Russell 2000, NASDAQ 100, they all achieved new all-time closing highs in February, even though we are selling off. So market participants are also using excuses. They, they seek for excuses to sell off a bit and still holding this trend. I mean, S&P, DGA are still above the 50-day moving average on a short-term basis. And they still they are still supports, like you said. So if we don't pass them to the up downside, I think we could have especially now a trading range or even more bearish patterns. Uh, investors intelligence advisor, show look on that. You see the bullish positions are going down. So more uh, bullish people are joining the camp of the bearish guys. So just asking you, knowing that before, what is your outlook for March? So, look, I think there are a lot of factors that are going to affect it, right? Obviously, I'm still, even though I've got to fight my feeling that we've talked about for the last year, when is the market going to catch up with what's happening globally economically? You know, uh, is that going to happen? Is the memory of the February highs of 2020 and the March 20 lows going to play a psychological effect on that? That plus the yield story, plus the fact that we are hitting up very recently, very quickly, some resistance up here at the 32,000 level in the Dow. At some point, you've got to have some consolidation. Where is people's focus? Are we being diverted by this whole GameStop, Red, Reddit, Wall Street bet story? Are people going out of one into another? So what is going to be the prevailing wind over the... And you asked me the question, I'm sending it back to you. And so I'm answering a question with a question because I think there are very moving parts, right? Uh, the the uh, vaccine role. I mean, are these things going to play a role in it individually? I think yes. Are they all going to come together and be a perfect storm that we may see the market sell off a little bit over the next four weeks? It's very possible. But it's a matter of the vaccine rollout, the, 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 the variant attack uh, uh, globally, uh, the new administration's uh, posture on this stimulus or disaster uh, program, whether people are going to be getting checks and where that money is going to go, uh, the yield curve per se, and all of these factors. So, you know, the market is a complex, it's become an incredibly complex a marketplace and platform in so many ways, which has diverted people's attention. Today here in New York, we opened 12 SPACs. We are down there. It's We're calling it SPAC-O-mania. spac -o again, <laughs> right? So their thirst for investments are out there, right? The marketplace is showing us that these things that used to open at $10 and stay at $10 for a while are now opening at $10.5 and $11. Is a number... There are 12 of them today. Are people getting all wound up in the Coinbase digital space with Bitcoin? Are people getting wrapped up in the whole Robin Hood, Wall Street bets, Reddit story? Are people getting wrapped up in, 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 um, in value in the Russell? Today is the MSCI rebalance. So I think we're seeing rotation. I think we've yet to see what will be that one catalyst. You know there's that game you play where you're pulling out blocks from a large thing that's that's uh to see when is it going to crumble so i think the blocks are not being pulled out but they're being moved and at some point something's either going to firm this thing up to take it higher or or we're going to pull one block out and we're going to see a little bit of a crumble right so i, I i'm answering a question with a question and i'm I will uh, give you a new question, but also a uh, nice idea that I want to get gather some exploration, exploration from you. I'm monitoring, especially in those times, not only technical analysis, seasonal patterns as well, and I'm monitoring the first and last trading day of each week for early signs of potential weakness, for example. It's called the down Friday, down Monday morning. 
And we have seen that, especially one year before, since before the corona outbreak, it was a down Friday, a down Monday signal. I just want to know something from you because you are more experienced than we, you are more on the stock exchange than we. Did you feel something like this? Did you ever have seen, recognized this signal kind of, is there a behavioral pattern where you would say, yes, of course, Salah, down Friday, down Monday is a weakness it's a potential weakness. So it's like, uh, have I seen this movie before? Right? You know? <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, the last number of days, I felt a little bit of a fracturing. I feel a little bit of a fear. You know, the movements up and down have been fast and furious. As we saw over the last four years with the tweets from uh, our ex, uh, soon to be super ex president, um, we saw market movements for irrational reasons now i think there the market is is more transparent but it's very add in a way because there's so many so many moving parts it really feels like you know that like when you get to the airport there's a there's a funny movie uh called airplane and the plane was coming in and it had no brakes and they were telling people what gate that they to expect their uh uh people to pick them up that gate six gate seven gate eight Every day, it seems, that people get hyper-focused on one thing. We saw that, and it takes away their attention on other things, right? The GameStop thing it was a story. It, it ran, it, that story ran for a couple of weeks. It had everybody all focused and hopped up, right? And the effects of social media and Congress and la, la, la. Then we've had the fact that, 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 um, that the virus and whatnot. And we've seen such a wild rotate. I mean... I know I talk to David Green on a daily basis. Some of this audience knows who he is. He's a technical analyst who has helped us curate a course with Salah. And on a given basis, and then there's also Stock Sharks, one of the great Instagram uh, uh, platforms from Canada, two young, incredibly bright guys who are social media. They are, they are uh, financial content gangsters, in my opinion. They put out content that's incredible. The stories, there's a plethora of stories going on about whether it's Elon Musk, whether it's Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, or whether it's all these new stocks that are IPOing and spacking, or whether it's just the sectors that are been pandemic friendly or the ones that are not. But we're seeing multi-digit percentage moves in hundreds of names on a daily basis. So you're seeing a huge influx into the market of 40 million plus new traders. You're seeing people over uh, reacting in an aggressive manner. For me, I feel there's a little bit of fear in the investment community, maybe to take some profits here and rotate. But I also fear, see a, a uh, the market seems to be reacting at, at, within the mode of an uneducated trader. You know, the way we're seeing these moves sort of highlighted by the GameStop movement and that Reddit crew where you're seeing stocks that are going from 40 to 130 back to 50 in an hour's time. Right, David and I did a Q&A yesterday, and there was 10 different stocks, whether it was Twitter, whether it was GameStop, whether it was KOSS, whether it was your normal names, whether it was the Nikes or whatever it was, Carnival Cruise. The movements in stocks on the upside and the downside are in such a state of exaggeration. It's just like it's, it, I think we're, we're in new ground here. Peter, you mentioned Donald Trump already. He moved to Florida, and I read a lot of Wall Street bankers also moved to Florida uh, doing some yeah, home office from there because it's much nicer weather there. Do you think this could be like a permanent change that uh, Wall Street will be empty and everywhere is gone, everyone is gone? Absolutely not. You know what, look, right now I think a lot of our cities look Uh, still fairly beaten up. You know, I don't think if you asked us a year ago, uh, we're up on the anniversary of this pandemic, of me getting sick from my world, to think that we would have said in a year's time, we would still be in this situation where we are ma wearing masks and, uh, and, and, and the streets are, are empty. I don't think anyone would have said that. And it's not just here in New York City, right? I speak to, I speak to Salah, I speak, you guys are in Germany. Europe is enclosed, separate. They closed Switzerland down yesterday from intra-European travel. England, you have no inter... So this is not a, 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 a uh, domestic U.S. problem. Uh, you know, I'm thrilled that Mr. Trump has moved to Florida. 
and we can only hope that perhaps Florida will fall off into the ocean. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, we don't have to worry about that situation. I don't think the financial, look, it is true that we can do whatever we want to do from anywhere. We really, you know, we are, we are uh, people can work remotely. And there have been a number of high, high level people like the Google community and whatnot who said that we may not be going back to offices for another year or ever. Right. So where people work remotely in this new world, it's it's psychologically uh, uh, exhausting. The fact to think that we will not be together as one in what I call a human element uh, situation. So perhaps people will go where taxes are lower, weather is nicer, where, you know, there's more relaxed uh, COVID restrictions. I know that here on the floor of the stock exchange with 12 SPACs opening today, that the human element, human element of the NYSE is alive and well. It's necessary. Price discovery is at its peak. We have uh, a nice handful. Not new. Look, it is the pandemic. We are on restricted uh, employment down here on the floor. But there's a really, really nice group down there of brokers, right, opening 12 SPACs, each one being done by hand by a person. Price discovery to the max, right? I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, I will. there you go. Look, at you can see the crowd. It's a nice crowd of people for a pandemic. And so um, I don't think we will ever lose this brick and mortar. And the financial community, as you know, uh, it thrives off of the energy from me, from us, from this place. So, you know, Florida's nice for a week or so, but it's not where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. Peter, it's so good to see that. And I totally agree. New York will be back soon. Last question for you, Peter. And it's not really a question. Do you know that Salah is a smart guy? Yes, I do. <laughs> Because, Peter, you can't see it right now, but he wrote a book and it's in my hands now. It's called Die Besten Trader Deutschlands, The Best Traders of Germany. So Salah is a busy bee. He even wrote no, a new book. book. Show me the book, Salah. I will sign it for you and send it over to New York. <laughs> well, you know what? Look, I, have, I am privy to a lot of great traders and a lot of bright people. Thanks to you, Manuel, I was introduced to Sala and the group at IG. And I have to admit that, you know, there's a lot of ego and a lot of fanfare and a lot of posturing within the financial community. People are talking about the trades they made money in and they never lose, and they're up thousands of percent and all this. And for somebody as young as Salah and as humble, for me, humility and being a student of the market every day, no matter how much you know, is one of the greatest qualities, as I always say. You know, I may look like Einstein. I'm surely not as smart as he is. I'm a student of the market. It's 35 years experience down here. So my deep respect for Salah and his ever initiating growth and uh, his humility in the marketplace. He is pretty goddamn smart. And uh, for me, you know, that's why we were on this conversation on a daily basis. I look to him for direction too when it comes to technical analysis, when it comes to the Bumidi bands. He's highly respected by John Bollinger, who is, who is the father of, of, the, of technical analysis in so many ways. So I defer to him on all counts, and it's an honor to be on the same uh, podium with him. Thank you, Peter. You've been always my mentor as well. And uh, this is we, we are keeping the momentum and helping people educate yourself. It's a long way, but you can be successful and efficient if you want. Correct. And I think one thing I will say, which makes you more relevant than ever, and also our collaboration on teaching education, when they had the congressional hearing the other day, they were always talking about regulation and this and that. And I said, I've seen this movie before. We've seen Ivan Bosky, we've seen Bernie Madoff, we've seen Jordan Balfour, we've seen people who have taken advantage of the system, who have manipulated the system and taken money from people uh, under bad auspices, and they never end up paying the price. Mr. Balfour allegedly has never even paid back the people who he stole money from. But at the end of the day, it's not about regulation, because that's a battle I don't want to fight. It's about education. That's what we try and do here. That's what we right. try and do here. analysis. And the best defense against the volatile market. What I know is the volatility that we're living through now 
whether it's related to the pandemic or Wall Street bets or cryptocurrency or whatever, the best defense against that and getting hurt on a long-term and a short-term basis is education and, in fact, is inside education, the nooks and crannies, is technical analysis, right? So that's something we, that's our message, that's our mission, and I'm happy to have, uh, I learned so much from Saw on a daily basis. Same for me. Guys, thank you so much, Peter Tuckman, the legendary Einstein and student of Wall Street and Salah Idine yeah. Boumidi, the head of markets at IG. Guys, thank you so much uh, and yeah, all the best for you guys. And the thank you for you too. The, the moderator in chief, Manuel Koch. Of Definitely. And inside Bergstadt. Thank you so much and thank you for watching. This was the IG Trading Talk. More on from information on IG.com. See you next week.